I'm sure you've heard the word femininity or the term feminine energy countless times on your journey, especially if you are a woman. And just in case you have ever wondered how to truly bask in your femininity or let your feminine energy shine through, I'm about to share with you some points that can help you feel and look more feminine and also allow your feminine energy to shine through. Before we go into today's topic, if you haven't joined the family yet, now will be a time for you to subscribe. If you are interested in leveling up your life or looking to live the very best version of your life, then this channel is definitely for you as I share videos on a weekly basis on how you can level up your life. So click the subscription button and then of course the notification bell just right beside it so you can get instantly notified whenever we upload a new video. And for those who haven't joined our email list yet, you definitely want to be on that platform as well because we share very valuable information via the email list platform as well that we can share here. So you have really been missing out if you are not subscribed to our email list. If you're interested, there's a link in the description box down below on how you can join us, okay? So without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Now today's video, like I said earlier, is going to be all about basking in your femininity and in your feminine energy. Now there's a difference between the two. Femininity is just pretty much the concept of knowing how to be a woman, your nature as a woman, the things that make you a woman and um, just enhancing those features that make you a woman. Feminine energy, on the other hand, is that aura or the traits that you display that allows you get in touch with your real self and then have meaningful connections with other people whilst you're radiating a very positive and a beautiful energy. Now, there is such a thing as a masculine energy and a feminine energy. There is the energy that the male gender radiates and then there is the energy that the female gender radiates as well. Unfortunately, today in society, a lot of women have taken on the masculine energy and then a lot of men, amazingly, are taking on female, feminine energy. And this not ought to be so because when that happens, there's an imbalance in society that makes things very rigid and difficult for everyone to just connect on a well-balanced level. And that's why as a woman, it's important that you're not only basking in your femininity, but you are also allowing your feminine energy shine through. So with that being said, let me go straight into some of the pointers that can, that can show if you are in your feminine energy or you are allowing your femininity shine through. Now, I have 30 points on my list. And in order for this video not to be overly long, I'm going to divide it into two parts. In the first part, I will share the first 15 points. And then in the second part, which I'll film a second video for, I'll share the remaining 15 points. Yes, it's that deep and it's that serious. And I really want you ladies to start to allow your feminine energy and your femininity shine through because that is actually what you truly need to thrive through life. So look out for the second part of that video, okay? Before I start with the point, I want to remind you that you really cannot be something you do not have. And the concept of feminine energy or femininity is something that is innate to us women. It's something that's already existing inside of us. So don't ever think that you do not have what it takes to be a feminine woman or bask in your feminine energy. You already have it inside of you. All you have to do is just recognize that it's there and then bring it out by taking on some activities, of course, through the points I'm going to share, that will nurture and develop that feminine side of you so that it starts to show itself through your everyday life as a woman. So always remember that you have what it takes. All you need to do is just develop it. And also remember that people can actually feel your energy. When you step into a place and when you're conversing with people, energy is real and it's transferable. When that's why, for example, when you get into a room and you find someone who is dull or who is sad or the tempo of that room is very dull, you take on that energy. 
or when you go into a maybe a room where there is music blasting and everyone is just happy and gyrating immediately you take on that energy of joy and happiness because energy is real and it's actually transferable whether you like it or not. So with that being said, the very first points that can actually help you thrive or bask in your femininity and allow your feminine energy shine through will be for you to love yourself generously. Of course, I've said this in so many videos that we have put up on this channel and I even have a couple of videos dedicated to self-love which I would ask or advise that you go watch maybe after watching today's video. You really cannot bask in your femininity or your feminine energy if you do not know how to love yourself generously. Like fully appreciate your one of a kind beauty. Appreciate your individuality. Appreciate the fact that you are valuable and you are on this earth to fulfill a particular purpose. Until you have that mindset, you really truly may not be able to fully walk in your femininity. So that's the very first step. Love yourself generously. Of course, that doesn't mean you should be selfish with yourself or towards others. There is a really healthy way to love yourself and that's why I would ask that you really go watch that video so you understand the concept of self-love. The second point that I've put down here that will allow you shine in your feminine energy will be for you to be your authentic self but constantly work on refining the parts that need refinement. Stop saying, that's just who I am, I can't change. Don't say that, that's, stop using that as an excuse to wallow in your negative behavior or negative qualities that are not getting you anywhere in life. When you observe that there's something about you that is making the, like the, your balance of life or the flow of your life quite rigid and difficult, especially when you're relating with yourself and others, don't just accept and say, that's who I am. That's not who you are. That's probably behavior that you learned from someone or something and you've taken it on as your way of being. But guess what? You can actually change that behavior if you really look into it and say that this thing is no longer serving me and do all it takes to unlearn what you have learned and learn new habits or relearn new habits. So yeah, be your authentic self. Keep being the things that make you who you are. But understand that you constantly need to continue to work on refining that part of you that actually need refinement. Remember, we're all still a work in progress. And until you are able to constantly check yourself every day and know where you still need some work to be done, you will not be able to shine in your feminine energy. The third point that allows you to shine in your feminine energy would be for you to address your emotional triggers. You cannot keep running away from them or denying that they actually exist. There are certain things that trigger you and cause you to erupt, especially emotionally. Things, for example, that make you overreact when you're not necessarily supposed to react. These things are doing you more harm than good and they are making you react or respond in a very masculine manner. When you react that way, you are displaying real masculine energy. Feminine women who are basking in their femininity do not react to situations, rather they respond to them. But sometimes we have hidden emotional triggers that have not been handled or healed and then that those triggers actually showcase themselves in the way we react or respond to situations and you need to address them. Now I put down here that you need to pay attention to what those triggers are and then what triggers you into a reaction or a terrible feeling that you don't like. What is that thing that makes you overreact and just roughen up your being or your physical self when it happens to you? It's not a normal behavior. There's something that is triggering it that you have not necessarily paid attention to. And I said that um, you also need to ask yourself why it is triggering you. And then you need to find out what needs to be done to heal from that thing permanently so that it stops triggering you emotionally. Now, this could be from an experience from your childhood, maybe your last relationship, a bad experience with your partner, with your parents, with a friend, 
from a stranger, something that makes you react in anger, something that makes you react disrespectfully, something that triggers you to raise your voice and overreact to situations when you could have easily prevented it. Something makes you lose your moral values. Something just makes you do things that you don't want to do. That is not normal behavior. And until you address your emotional triggers, you will continue to react and respond to situation in a masculine manner. And that will put you off and then put other people around you off as well. So another important way would be for you to address your emotional triggers. The next point will be for you to have a positive aura. It's not hard to have a positive aura. Don't be a lady who is moody and who frowns all the time, who just wears a long face from sun up to sundown. Wear a smile on your face. Be mindful of your facial expression and your body language. Let your body language showcase positivity. Let the words out of your mouth display positivity. Let your countenance be one of positivity. Don't be the one who is easily timid, shy, intimidated. No, you need to chest up, square up rather, chin out, and just allow your confidence shine through you whilst you're displaying a positive aura. The next point that I've put down here will be for you to be more present. You need to learn how to focus on one activity at a time. Stop trying to be doing an activity and then you are here in your body, but your mind is in 10 different activities that you want to do after that. Be present in what you are doing. Give it your focus because if you are not present and giving it your focus, you tend to be doing that thing unconsciously and that's not the best you can give into doing that thing. So a feminine woman who basks in a feminine energy is very focused on what she's currently doing per time. She gives it her full attention, quietens her mind from everything else that may be taking her attention and focuses on that task until she is done before she moves on to the next one. I put down here that you need to soften your thought process and don't let issues of past moments or future desires be cloud what's happening in the present moment. Enjoy what's happening now and live now. Stop worrying or being anxious over what has happened in the past or what's going to happen in the future. Be present. When you are present, you, are, you allow yourself room to fully be in the moment of what's happening and then you give your attention to everything that's happening. That way you can easily control your emotions, you can easily control how you are doing what you're doing so that you are producing effectively and efficiently and then you are conscious of the feminine energy that you're radiating while you're doing what you're doing. But don't always be on the go, 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 go at all times. Quieten your thoughts and then just focus on the present moment, okay? The sixth point that allows you to bask in your femininity and shine your feminine energy will be for you to practice gentleness. Something of importance to note that I've put down here is approaching difficult and challenging situations with a lot of gentleness is a way, a great way to diffuse the tension and the stress and provide a sense of safety. Now, gentility towards yourself and others is a great way to get in touch with your feminine side and radiate the true beauty of being a woman. There is beauty in just being gentle with everything. When you're cooking, you cook with gentleness. When you speak to other people, you speak from a place of gentleness. Whatever it is you're doing, you're gentle about it. When you're performing your morning skincare routine, you're not just... Like everything is not happening like like everything is not happening with so much force and so much speed. You are taking your time, being gentle in the moment, and just allowing that your feminine energy radiate itself through whatever it is that you are doing. There is beauty, so much beauty in that. I also gave an example here. For example, when someone steps on you. What you can do to practice gentleness will be to accord them some grace and respond to the matter gently. Don't react, respond. And one way to respond gently to a situation like that will be for you to put them yourselves in their shoes. If you were the one who stepped on someone, would you want grace accorded to you knowing that you didn't intentionally step on that person? 
If you know you want grace to be accorded to you, why don't you accord the other person that same grace, knowing that maybe they didn't really intentionally step on your feet? So you're sort of reacting, somebody steps on you, oh, they turn around and they say, oh, I'm sorry. And then you go, oh, that's okay, it's fine. And they find a way to clean yourself up. That's pretty much a way to respond gently. And it's also showing empathy as well. So instead of reacting and exploding in anger, which is a masculine and a very annoying energy, you just calm down, respond, and just tell yourself, this person didn't intentionally want to step on me or do something to me. So I'm not gonna to react or to respond in anger, okay? I put down here that exploding in anger concerning any situation would always make things worse. So always try to maintain an aura of gentleness, okay? The next point on my list is actually one of my favorite points here. And this one would actually allow you to radiate femininity on a whole new level. It's just simply learning to just be. Learn to just be. Just sometimes, all you want to do is just chill and relax. You don't always have to be on the go, 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 go at all times. What's the next tax? What's the next thing that we need to do? What's the next thing? You finish, you're not even, you're barely done with one. You're like, okay, what's the next? Like your brain is always on the go, 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 go. And you don't just spend some time to relax. Sometimes all your body needs to thrive is for you to relax. Take time to be by yourself and relax. Do something that makes you feel relaxed mentally, physically, emotionally, and mentally. Find the time in your day to do things that take care of you. Do things that clear, help you clear your thoughts, that helps you get in touch with your inner self. It can be reading a book, soaking in a bathtub, sitting still in silence, cooking yourself a meal, a good meal, taking a walk, just partake in things that make you forget about your work, problems, things that put you in a very um, go, 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 go mood all the time. And just focus on being and relaxing and chilling, okay? The next one will be for you to be flexible in your approach, your approach towards situations. Like, don't be overly rigid. Yes, it's important to have structure, it's important to have an organized self, it's important to have a fixed schedule, but sometimes, sometimes, Flex things up a bit to accommodate others. For example, you may have set up a, uh, an appointment with a person who didn't meet up the time. Instead of being so tight-fisted and rigid, think about them and understand that maybe there's a reason why they were not able to meet up with the time. So instead of being rigid, quickly be flexible, change things up, and then find a way to make it work and continue with the day. Don't be overly rigid. Rigidity is a masculine energy. Real, true, high-value women do not bask in rigidity. We are flexible. But again, of course, when you're being flexible, you have to be conscious of the flexibility so that people don't take advantage of it, okay? Before we go into the next point, just a quick reminder that our course, The Art of Speaking Eloquently and Elegantly, is now available. If you want to level up on how you communicate elegantly and eloquently and you want to improve your English speaking skills, this course is definitely for you. You can click the link in the description box down below to get more details and information about the course and how you can access it as well. As elegant women, speaking confidently, eloquently, communicating effectively is of utmost importance. This course will give you all of that and then also give you lots of words that you can add to your vocabulary so that you too can be on your way to communicating effectively and more elegantly. The ninth point that I've put down here on how you can bask in your femininity and allow your feminine energy shine through will be for you to stop trying so hard to be right. Stop trying so hard to always be right. Now, there's a saying that I got from somewhere many years ago, and I'm going to just repeat it here. It says, your perception of reality is just your perception. It is not real reality. What you think is reality is just what you think. That's not what reality is. And a lot of people's perceptions and reality are formed by different things, like their background, their level of education, their level of exposure. So you may be limited in your knowledge and be 
discussing or talking from that limited standpoint. So what you know may be limiting. So stop trying so hard to be right. I put down here that everyone says things differently and from different perspective. Learn to communicate and express your thoughts clearly and confidently, but with a lot of empathy, knowing that the other person may not see things the way you see them. Everyone can see things like you. And even if you think that you are right, and you know that you are absolutely right on a particular topic, your goal is not to enforce your right belief on the next person. Your goal is to hear them out, understand their thought process, and, make, and understand why they think the way that they think, and then find a very nice way, a respectful way, to pitch your point of view to them. Remember I used the word pitch. Pitch your point of view to them. And if there are people who listen and ponder on things, they would listen to your point of view and then see how they can correct and adjust themselves. Don't expect that they would necessarily correct and adjust themselves immediately while the conversation is going on. Sometimes a lot of people, some people need a couple of hours, a few days, a few weeks, a few months, even years to process these things and experiences as they pro progress in life and experience life. If you know you're really right, as they progress, one day they will remember this thing that you have said, that you pitched to them, and it can actually say, oh, now I see what Winnie was trying to say. I see what Tomiwa was trying to tell me that day. Now it makes sense. But if you are trying to be overly right and just be dogged in your approach to show them that you are right, they may not take it in. You have not planted a good seed. Learn to approach things from that manner. I also put down here that you need to embrace their own perspective as well and then find out what you can learn from them. Because sometimes there's a lot of things you can learn from what they are saying instead of trying so hard to make them agree with your own point of view. Having healthy disagreement is a great way to let your feminine energy shine through. I, feel, I always say that you can actually disagree with a person without necessarily being feisty or being masculine about it or being dogged about it or being rude or disrespectful about it. And if you think that they are wrong, like I said before, or they are making a mistake with their point of view, Pitch it to them, present it to them from a place of empathy, like you are actually making a suggestion. Not that you are trying to make them, call, like you must listen to what I'm saying and it must be done the way I'm doing it. Okay, so always ensure that your goal is not trying to always be right. It is just trying to see things from another person's perspective. And if you think that they are wrong, and you are right, pitch your rightness to them in a very respectful manner, okay? So the tenth point here on how you can allow your feminine energy shine through will be for you to master the art of humility. Now, humility is just simply acknowledging that you are valuable, but you are not better than anyone. You are not better because the minute you think you are better than anyone, you have put yourself on a competitive level. And why would you be using someone else as a standard for your full beautiful self? No one should be a standard for you. Understand that yes, you're valuable, but humility reminds you that you are not better than anyone else. Everyone is just shining through on, their, on the natural playing field and there is no competition with anyone. Humility is also when you can easily admit that you are wrong. Humility is just being modest, being very modest in your behavior, in your approach towards others and not thinking that you are the one who knows it all or who has all the answers to all the problems, to everything. Humility requires you to exhibit modest behavior. And in your humility, sometimes humility also makes you a little bit vulnerable, where you are able to tell, confidently be honest about the things that you feel and um, not um, always looking at yourself as someone who knows it all or has the answers to all of life's problems. Sometimes there's beauty in vulnerability, and that's what I've actually come to learn as I advance in age. So mastering the art of humility would help you shine forth in your femininity and make you bask in your feminine energy. So I know that I said that this, I was gonna take the first 15 points in this episode, but judging from the timing of this video, this video is already going to be a very long one. So instead of dividing the video into two parts, 
I'm going to divide it into three parts. So I've taken the first part today by sharing with you the first 10 points. In another video, I will share the second 10 points. And then in another in a third video, I will share the remaining 10 points. This is actually how serious this topic is. And I believe that it's actually worth putting in all of these efforts so that we're able to drive our message through effectively. Hopefully with these first 10 points that I have shared, you can go back and just reflect and decide for yourself if you are truly living or if you are being a feminine woman who is basking in her femininity and her feminine energy. We'll definitely be uploading the remaining parts as soon as we can, okay? Um, so that's pretty much all I have for you for today's video. If you haven't joined our email list, remember you can join us so you can also continue to get valuable information on how to level up via the newsletters and articles we'll be sharing on that platform. I'll see you again with another video. Until then, remember to stay very elegant. Take care.